Welcome to the Internet University. Today's lesson will be an introduction to Python programming. Please visit us at theinternetuniversity.org for more educational videos. Today we will learn the basics of programming in the Python programming language, how to develop those programs in the idle development environment. You'll learn how to use the Python shell window and the idle file editor. Finally, we will run your first program called chaos.py. In Python, there is a shell window that provides access to Python's interactive mode. You type a statement at the prompt and then hit enter key to send it to the Python interpreter. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you seem to be hung and cannot get a new prompt, the interpreter is likely in a state where it is waiting for you to enter something. Hitting control key will send a keyboard interrupt and you should be able to get back to the prompt. It can also be used to interrupt any running command. Your code in Python is colorized as you type it based upon Python's syntax types. Comments are in red, string literals are in green, definitions are in blue, keywords are in orange, and output is blue. Start Python and idle, and in the shell window at the interpreter prompt, you can try these statements. Print hello world. Print 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3. Etc. Code blocks are determined by indentation in Python. If you type in the factorial function below, you will find that when you hit enter after the def or while clauses, the next line is automatically indented for you as you enter a new block. This is all you normally should be concerned about regarding indentation when in the shell window. It is also possible to change the indentation level, which defaults here to an 8-space tab, as well as indent or dedent, a selected region. These commands are described later under the heading of editing a file. Here is a Python task for you to try. Enter the following simple function into the shell window, and then try to execute the command. This command will have Python greet you personally if you enter your name. The Python editor has the capability of completing words. By typing an alt slash together, this will call a word completion mechanism. In the example below, it is not necessary once the divisible function is defined to type in the entire command. You can just type a D followed by alt slash and it is completed automatically for you. Try out this example using word completion with the divisible function. Word completion in Python is based upon those words that have been previously entered into the buffer the first response will be the most recently entered word, which matches. Successively entering alt slash will toggle through any other possibilities. So in the above example, entering an n followed by alt slash three times will toggle through num, not, and then finally num list. If we started with nu, this would be limited to num and num list. Python can remember your command history. The command history mechanism can save much typing. Once you've selected a previous command 
and brought it to the bottom, either by toggling through them using Alt-P and Alt-N, or directly selecting it, you can edit it as desired before hitting the enter before hitting the enter key and having it sent to the interpreter placing the cursor at the end of any line of text and then pressing enter will bring a copy of all the lines in the compound statement to the bottom placing the cursor at the end of a command and pressing enter will bring a copy of that command to the bottom. Placing a cursor at the prompt, you can toggle up and down through the history using the commands Alt-P and Alt-N. As soon as you type in the opening bracket for a function or method call, a small box will pop up below the line, giving you a tip with regard to the arguments that are expected. In this example, the divisible function is called and the tip is given that two parameters are needed, a num list and a divisor. The function will return a single number. Editing files in Python is done with the idle file editor, which lets you create new files or browse or edit existing Python source files. To open a file, you can use the new command option. A new, the new command will open an empty window when you want to start creating a Python source file from scratch. Open lets you navigate to and open any file on your hard drive. A new file editor window will be opened with the name of the file and the path to its and the path to it as its title. It will be titled untitled if it is a new and unsaved file. To save a file in Python You can use the command Control X, Control S. You should save a file with this or the command to change the file name with a Save As command, Control X, Control W. These are the standard ways of saying, saving a file. You can develop your code incrementally in Python by first importing and then subsequently reloading the modules into the shell window to test each as you make changes. This can be done by using an import command from the shell window or by using the run module in the file editor. You can type or paste text into the window and the code as you enter will be colorized as it was in the shell window. Here is a Python task. Create a series of new editing windows and paste each of the following loop statements. Run these loop statements by selecting the run module, control F5 option. In this example, we will execute a block of code which sums the first 100 integers. You can move about the Python file buffer and shell windows using the following key bindings. You can move left and right, start to end, up one line, down one line, Center the window, find a given entry, find a section.
The following table contains key bindings that can be used for basic editing. Deleting, cutting and pasting, copying, selecting, replacing, expanding, finding the previous command, the next command, or undo or redo the last changes. Python semantics are based upon indentation. There are a number of editing options that work with selected regions of your file. The indent functions are useful when adding or removing nested constructs. The tabify region function converts leading spaces in a line to tabs, eight spaces to each tab. The untabified region function converts all tabs to spaces. These along with the indent functions are useful for converting a standard format source code that has been copied from the internet.